inspirational stories that we were able to hear. Uh, and today is no different. Today is, uh, you know, we have some amazing riders, uh, women riders who are here with us, who would, who would probably be sharing their experiences. We have uh, five speakers today. And, uh, you know, they come from you know, Malaysia, Singapore, India, and Van from South Africa. Uh, I'm not sure if she's traveling and if she's in Cambodia or is in South Africa. Uh, but uh, we, I, I'm sure that we'll have an amazing session uh, with different stories, etc. The idea of, um, we, so uh, we did one session of International Riders Men uh, uh, two weeks back where we had close to 12 riders from across the globe share their experiences. But we thought, uh, you know, we should have, the earlier idea was to have one single session. But since we had so many participants and, you know, we had, you know, so many women riders come in, we wanted to ensure that we have a different platform uh, where we, you know, share these experiences and stories as well. So Talk Tales is one such forum where we try and bring stories uh, from different walks of, you know, riding, driving, uh, you know, passions that you might have related to automobiles, D2 wheelers or four wheelers. Of course, because most of us are in the two wheeler segment, we have a lot of riders who are coming in and sharing stories. But I hope that, uh, you know, in the coming days, we'll be able to bring in more diverse stories from different parts of the automobile world. Um, so today, uh, like I said, it's it's about international riders. We will try and hear, of course, a perspective from women uh, in terms of their riding, uh, you know, what challenges they face, so on and so forth, so that uh, we have a mixed audience today. We will also be able to, uh, you know, relate and empathize uh, and maybe uh, make this, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a great experience for everybody. But... Um, we will also try and understand beyond, uh, you know, just being a female rider, more about their riding experiences as well. That that I think is the key uh, you know, takeaway that probably all of us will take from here. Uh, Preeti is here, one of our uh, co team members from Talk Tech Talk Tales. Preeti would be introducing Hi, the riders everyone. today. Uh, you know, so we felt that uh, you know, since she's one of our senior riders in the group, it is only. Uh, fitting for her to introduce the riders. So I will hand over the baton to Preeti, request her if she can introduce the riders one by one. So uh, for all the audience, otherwise, uh, all of you are on mute, but you can raise your hands, ask your questions in the chat window, and we will get that over to part, to the speakers by the end of the session. It's the same drill. Uh, and for the speakers, uh, we will do one by one. We'll do a quick introduction one by one, five to 10 minutes each. And then we will open up the floor forum for questions and, uh, you know, we'll try and get in more perspectives from you. So, uh, Preeti, over to you. You can start with our first rider. And look, thanks. thanks, all. Thanks, Shriram. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Like uh, Shriram mentioned, so this is going to be a very special uh, session uh, since we are having women riders who are somewhere leading these segments to inspire the society and they are breaking the barriers and coming step forward. Uh, it is in writing, is leading to social services and all. So without taking time, I just want to introduce very first speaker, Mohana. Hi, Mohana. So Mohana is from uh, Johor, Malaysia. So her passion in writing started with her uh, Yama 88 in teenage, which further led to Kawasaki versus 600. She has been uh, riding to explore new places all around the world and she believes that biking group. So she is one who believe in biking brotherhood and uh, biking group where they can contribute more to the social society uh, for the children, for the needy. And she always uh, encourage everyone, uh, ladies, especially ladies to come ahead and uh, identify their passion and enjoy the writing. So over to Mona. Welcome, Mona. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Welcome, yeah, everyone. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me uh, this evening. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for the very warm introduction. So, um, uh, a little sm small intro about myself. I'm uh, 35 this year, and um, uh, I had this passion for riding and for two wheels since I was uh, 11 or 12. And um, it was actually from the, a particular column from a particular newspaper here. So every Sunday, there'll be one particular column 
uh, by this uh, writer Paul Tan, and he wrote, writes very good uh, reviews for cars and bikes and all that. So I used to read that. And one day, uh, normally he writes about cars, but one day he wrote about the Goldwing. And uh, that moment I fell in love with the Goldwing. So since then, yes, and um, I'm focusing on, I have to get what uh, in my lifetime, I have to get one Goldwing and I want to ride it uh, and uh, go as far as I can with it. So, uh, but uh, being in uh, Malaysia, it's not very easy for us at a very young age to obtain or buy a, a big CC motorcycle. So it took some time before I could get my hands on one. And um, being a lady, it was um, there was not much encouragement at first. And uh, thank God, uh, after knowing a few people, and they introduced to me, they helped me out to get a motorbike. Uh, the was 650 now that I'm riding now. And uh, from there, things have been good. Um, and I hope to do more. Back to you, Titi. We can't hear you, Priti. I can't hear you. Sorry, I was Sorry, muted. I yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mona. So it's uh, nice to have you in our panel today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So you want to share more about your riding experience and uh, how you started? Because I see a lot of uh, riding uh, journey that you have. So you want to share some more experience with us? Okay, because um, I have this. I've had this passion for some time, but. Uh, uh, I started with a very small bike when I was um, 18, 19 years old, but that was just to commute to you know nearby places and all. Not for for not I did I didn't use the bike to uh, go with my passion. So and after I started work and all that, when I was 30, only then I got a bike to uh, proceed with my passion. And uh, only then I had the time and the financial stability and all that. So. When um, I got the bike um, through, um, after joining this uh, club, uh, Garuda Bikers, so they had actually supported me a lot uh, in this journey of biking. Um, one particular friend, uh, Madhava, Madhava Rao, he is the one who helped me, really push me when, when I thought I, really, I couldn't and all that. He said, no, you, you can do this. And uh, my president, uh, Subash and um, uh, our godfather Siva, he also helped me a lot, encouraged us, and that is the most important thing to encourage me. So, with that encouragement and trust, so I could go. I uh, So far, I traveled uh, all around Malaysia, and uh, we are looking at, at going to Thailand and all, but since the COVID situation now, everything has been um, uh, at, at a halt for a while. So, yeah. Sure. Um, we did a few rides, and uh, I've also joined this uh, Lady Bikers. There's a group, Lady Bikers group here in uh, Johor, in, in my state, the way I stay. Um, they normally focus on uh, riding with deaf ladies and uh, helping them learn a lot of things. Because a lot of people think that uh, ladies, they, Lady Bikers, they only know how to ride. So when it comes to mechanics, and it comes, when it comes to Bike, uh, bike breakdowns and all that, they don't know much. So this group of people, they actually help us. They teach us more on the mechanic part. They, they encourage us. Um, and, you know, sometimes as ladies, we, we might be a bit shy when coming, when asking, when asking this kind of thing to men. We, we might think maybe they look down at us and all that. So this group actually helps me in, to build my self-esteem in that, that way. And uh, this group also helps us uh, Help a lot in a lot of charity work, social services, char charity work, and all that. Yeah. Nice. Nice to hear, Mona. So, welcome, welcome on the panel. Next 
Our uh, speaker is Anand Nenti. She is brand ambassador for Nagaland Tourism, chairman and managing director for Congro Naga Society. She was recently uh, there in news for uh, completing 11 district of Nagaland in 26 days. She is working on uh, inspiring women from all different segments of Nagaland, uh, inspiring them, uh, helping them identifying their potential and uh, spreading awareness on the Naga culture and the tradition of various Naga tribes. So Onen, uh, welcome, welcome to the panel. Uh, if you just want to add a few more lines to your introduction, if you're missing anything here. Hi, hey. well, um, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me and it's a very great privilege for me to share my stories. And yeah, so, um, you know, it's very good to see women from different countries representing, you know, different <laughs> country and then share their stories. It's really inspiring. And I think this is such a great initiative, you know, for especially for the women. It's like a great uh, platform to share our own stories and then get to know mm -hmm. more stories and get inspired. Um, for me, you know, the vision for writing uh, came up to me like six years ago. and these things like, you know, uh, this happened like when I made an accident uh, at home, I was unable to work for a very long time. And that's how um, my mom, my sister they decided to get me a scooty at first. And then uh, later on, my friends, my other friends, they were also a biker, like they have a uh, cool super bikes. That's how uh, it shifted to a motorbike, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Onen. Welcome to the panel for today. Thank you. So next, uh, another writer, Minakshi. So Minakshi, she is an army officer, uh, born to an army officer. She is a school teacher. She worked for various MNCs and uh, uh, she is having a background in uh, event, basically corporate events. She is having the riding uh, passion for, and she had uh, endurance rider. She is, she started riding and pedaling with geared bikes at very early age. So she started with Rajdut 175, moved to an LML Vespa to Electra 350 and to Classic 500. So she has written all 29 states in India and UK and European countries like uh, United Kingdom, Scotland, Wales, Greece, Turkey. She is having experience from uh, various nations in uh, across the world. So welcome Menakshi, welcome to the panel. Um, hello, yeah. hello everybody. Hey. Yeah, hi. yeah, hi. Thank you so much uh, Preeti for this lovely introduction. Um, Hello everybody, uh, as she said, my name is Minakshi. Uh, my biking journey started pretty early in life where my father taught me how to ride a motorcycle um, at an early age, just because he didn't want to take me to tuitions and school and stuff like that. So that's how, um, you know, I got introduced to bikes um, and slowly and steadily, uh, you know, my passion for uh, the two, -wheel, two wheelers kind of, you know, grew. Um, right now, um, we booked up a new uh, bike, a KTM. So I'm kind of excited to, you know, get to ride it around. And since I've shifted to Kolkata, it's going to be much more um, interesting. So uh, for me, um, biking is just not a passion. It is also a profession. Um, uh, so I'm also a co-founder of, of, of an initiative called the Endless Trail. Um, I have a partner called Samira and both of us kind of make sure that we contribute towards the community in our own capacity. Um, so what is the Endless Trail? Endless Trail is basically an initiative that upgrades or upskills uh, people into motorcycles. Um, so we do, uh, you know, teach women how to ride motorcycles. Um, so the story goes in a way that we wanted to not only ride, but also encourage more women to join us in riding. Um, you know, a lot of women keep telling us that it's their bucket list to learn how to ride a motorcycle. Uh, it's, you know, their age old dream to kind of ride a motorcycle, for specifically in India, the Royal Enfield. Uh, we kind of help them, uh, you know, live that dream of riding the motorcycles. So far, it's been almost a year and a half since we have uh, started the initiative. 
and ever since then we've taught close to around 80 women how to ride bikes and many of them have actually bought and they are uh, they are you know um, aggressively into riding now uh, taking long rides going on tours um, so that's my story and I hope to uh, you know encourage and motivate more women to join us uh, and I hope uh, we get to do this thank you welcome welcome Manakshi so uh, we have Ivonia she's from South Africa uh, she is a happy homemaker, a cheerful grandmother, and capable motorcycle rider. She has advanced driving course certification uh, under her belt. She likes to spoil her friends and grandkids by taking them for rides. Introduce them to the motorcycling uh, world. Ivonia, she has a two, three uh, wheeler uh, and enjoys every moment she rides. So, welcome, Ivonia. Uh, yeah, welcome. So you want to add to your uh, intro here, yeah, a few points? Okay, I just want to say, since I was riding, um, okay, let me start by the beginning. I'm from South Africa. Um, I'm already about seven months in Cambodia with the virus uh, that we've got all over the country. So we are uh, here in, in Cambodia until we can get a flight back to South Africa. We travel around the world many places and wherever we go, we really try to join all bike shows and bike families. It's con connected to bike families and so on because that's life. Uh, it's a journey and we love it. Um, since I've been riding um, with my husband, my biggest dream in life was to have my own bike. Unfortunately, I was in an accident when I was seven years old, a motor car accident, and I'm handicapped in my left arm. So there's no way that I can use any left hand controls on a bike. My husband is an uh, engineer, so he can really fix a lot of stuff for me. So he, we contacted lots of um, places and they said it's not possible. He sat down and he worked out a plan for us, and my dream came true. We bought my first 1200 Sportster and he converted all the left hand control over to the right hand control. And I was on the road. road. So I was like born free. He said he, he was actually cross with himself that he did it because he never saw me anymore. I was always on the road, on, on my way somewhere. Very happy. And um, what I must say, what I really tried and, 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 and I've done that, I've joined each and every course I could do because I feel, you know, people have got a, a real wrong um, belief. They think the thicker the wheel, the bigger the bike, more stable, and it's just the opposite. The bigger the wheel, the bigger the bike, it's difficult. So I've been to advanced courses. I've I'm, I'm the first woman in South Africa to con complete, complete with men on the GTEC driving course, the advanced course, and I was very proud of it. But because of that, I could go places where a lot of women couldn't go with their bikes because of having that. Uh, it's just such a comfort to know your bike. Uh, we had to drive to big water, uh, they put water with a water car. On the, on the road and we had to drive on a certain speed which they were looking our speed as to contain a certain speed and we had to go through it with a motorbike so that you can always be in control. All that stuff made it much easier on the end of the day. They taught us how to go into two, uh, very um, uh, difficult road circumstances and um, if I can advise anybody is to, if there's a bike course anyway, do it. It's so much, it makes you so much safer. I, I was in a big accident. I was um, riding about 120 kilometers and I let I, my, my back, um, sorry, my wheel came off. And on that stage, I think anybody would really go all around like this. Luckily, on the course, they taught us. To bring your bike with your speed down and I came off without one scratch so that is uh, very important um, 
we do RT training in South Africa. I don't know if any of the other uh, women bikers know about it. We do RT training. Uh, whenever you buy a, a bike, um, I'm talking now for me, Harley, um, they will have a free uh, RT training for all their bikers um, every second or third, third Saturday of the month. And we will go and do the, the training with them. And um, that helps as well. So, like I said, all training. Then, my husband um, saw me liking the bike thing very much, so I got my second bike. The second bike is a, a 107 uh, cubic uh, motor, inch motor, and um, both my bikes, uh, three wheeler, he, he bought a, um, it converted it into a three wheeler, and uh, I use. Uh, this specific bike name clear. I use her when we go long, very long distances. We would go like three, four days, um, very, very long. And then it's more comfortable. It's got a, a sound system in which makes it better, ladies. It's good. Um, another thing what we uh, women in South Africa look out for is we make sure we have an emergency kit with us. Two actually, one for us personally, and then one for the bike. We have um, like a little emergency kit where we can, um, if we have a puncture or we get stuck on the road with certain stuff, it's in nowhere and nowhere, and just sit and wait for somebody because it's very dangerous. So that helped me out a lot um, previously. And um, then we've, we've been in two years in Malaysia where we joined uh, Montjuic Bike Week. Uh, we went everywhere they went where we, we could um, get in with their dates, with their shows. We enjoyed it so much. Um, I think as well, we were in the magazine as well. Uh, we went to KL um, with the bike show. And uh, yeah, that is our, that's our experience with bikes. And, it makes the family very big. Wherever you go, there's always. It's a family, it's, it's, it's a tradition. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Avonia. Nice to hear about your experiences in uh, writing and the initiative that you have taken. Welcome, welcome to the panel. Uh, next on panel, we have Vikneshwari. Uh, she is from Kazang, Malaysia. She started her riding with the Kawasaki Ninja 600cc, and now she has GTR 1400. She started riding to get away from her routine life and the new life experience which you want to explore. She is having interest in uh, exploring the new places, having new adventure every day. So she has just all uh, all dimensions of life uh, through the charity and the participating in the char charity programs. She is a professional uh, financial planner, and uh, what she says is. Uh, though biking is seen as a dangerous hobby, it has done more good to her. So, welcome, Vikneshwari. You want to add some points here? Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me in this platform. It's a pleasure to meet all these great ladies and also the gentlemen. Okay. Um, basically, for me, uh, riding, if you're talking about riding, it probably started when I was like 18 years old. It is a norm in Malaysia when a, a son or a daughter attains age 18, the parents will send them for driving license, uh, to obtain driving license and things like that. But in my case, my father went a step ahead and he also got me to do, uh, take the riding license. Perhaps it's one of his actions which he regrets till today. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, after that, I was riding just the uh, normal bike. Um, I was using it to college and all that. Subsequently, you know, we entered a different stage of life where we started to work and things like that. We basically uh, forget about riding for a while. Um, riding a big bike, it, it probably was a passion to everyone else. But for me, riding a big bike was actually a fantasy. I used to fantasize riding a big bike because I thought it was quite impossible for me to get one and ride, you know. But over the years, um, perhaps, you know, uh, things got better and things like that. And uh, it came uh, to a point of time where I wanted to do something different and I actually got a bike for myself. 
and uh, that was the Kawasaki 600 uh, 600 uh, cc and I when I got the bike I basically don't know anything about big bikes uh, and I don't know who who are the people in Malaysia who are riding are there any like lady riders who can I go to so after getting the bike then I started doing some research and all that I found some riding groups and all that to join uh, and subsequently it started and of course riding has become a uh, my passion in life actually now. So I've been riding this uh, big bike uh, since 2012. Uh, so that's like about eight years. Of course, along these um, years, um, I've got an opportunity to meet many good friends. I ride with the ladies as well as the men. Uh, as what uh, Miss Mona said, we actually learn more among the men. We learn how to ride actually. Uh, some riding skills, tactics, uh, some mechanical things that as a lady, we probably would know. Um, and over the years, actually, I've also um, done the uh, Iron Butt Endurance Challenge. I completed that, uh, which is 1,600 kilometer within 24 hours. I did that, and I've also uh, done a ride uh, from Malaysia to Golden Triangle, which is the end of Thailand, uh, border of Laos. All these were done among the ladies' group, and uh, that's something I was uh, very proud of. Of course, moving forward, I would like to have uh, more opportunities to ride and with God's blessing, perhaps I will be able to do it. Yeah. And also uh, participating in charity programs and things like that. You know, it's, it's something really nice that you can do as a biker. Yeah. Thank you, Priti. Nice to hear, Vitneshwari. So welcome all of you. Welcome to the panel. Uh, we are pleased to have you all. So I'm passing this to Shriram and yeah, let's stay tuned here. Thanks, Preeti. Thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to a few questions. I'd request participants, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the chat window. Also raise your hands if you'd like to uh, ask questions directly to the panelists. Uh, while questions are coming in, I think I'll continue with you, uh, Vikneshwari. I think there is a question about the riding scene in Malaysia for women. Uh, so you said that, you know, you have groups that you ride, etc. Um, you know, can you sh spread, uh, you know, share a bit more light on uh, what do you call it? You know, are there specific women biking groups? Uh, you know, I understand that, of course, even in our groups, you know, there are riders from all genders. But uh, how, uh, what are the challenges that you face when you're riding alone on, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, women bikers or, you know, can you throw some light on that? Uh, sorry, I'll get you to unmute. Yeah. Thank you, Shri Ram. Okay, as for the biking scene for women in Malaysia, during the time when I started riding, it, as you all know, Malaysia is a multicultural, multi ethnic country. So, um, there are many lady bikers actually in Malaysia. Um, but if you're talking about Indian lady biker, that is very few. Uh, during the time when I joined a riding, I probably knew about one or two. But today, there are more uh, Indian lady riders who have joined the scene. But for as for the other ethnic group, we have many. Okay, and as a ladies uh, biking group, we have various group in uh, Malaysia. Actually, we have the Lady Bikers Malaysia. We have Kawasaki Lady Bikers. We have Harley Ladies. Um, many groups. Um, of course. When, when you ride as a woman uh, in a women group, the, the riding experience is of course very different because you know naturally women are very safe riders, defensive riders, okay, and uh, we ride in a convoy. Um, whereas when you, when you ride with a man, uh, the man's capability and all that is of course sometimes better than us, but we also learn from them. Um, whereas uh, if you if you talk about the, uh, a full ladies group. Um, they have their own activities, like they have their own riding plans, their own charity program, which is very lady-based. So it depends. As a lady biker, we can go both ways. We can join the ladies group, which is, of course, our, will be our priority. And also we can join a, a mixed group, which is also fun to be with. So ladies, by lady bikers in Malaysia, there are many. If you have, if we are looking at it. There are many ladies in Malaysia already. All right. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, I'll I'll maybe bring in Onen now. Uh, uh, you know what what a lot of uh, us even in India don't uh, 
uh, know is uh, you know Nagaland has a very very high female literacy rate, uh, and uh, I want to take on its perspective since you're from the state. How is it uh, in the in the in the northeast uh, around around women taking up biking? Can you throw some light because I know you do a lot of tourism driven activities there, uh, and you know when you ride beyond the state, uh, right beyond the seven states when you come out. What differences have you seen? Um, so, Anand, would you want to take over and yeah. answer this question? Yeah. yeah. Um, me, last year, I was solo touring uh, 11 districts of Nagaland. So, at the time, I had this privilege uh, to meet women organizations and then Pikers Club and then NGOs from every district. So, I was, uh, meantime, I was also looking for the uh, female biker lady from Nagaland, but uh, only, there were only few people, you know, so it was um, kind of a very um, challenging, and then I was also encouraging those women organizations, those uh, people that are made to uh, help women to learn how to ride a motorcycle because in my part I was able to uh, solo tour because of a man who taught me how to start the engine and then you know who sacrificed his bike to you know uh, to learn and then to go for a ride so I was encouraging uh, bikers club from every district to uh, encourage women you know to help them and then um, to help them morally and then like uh, give advice and then motivate them to uh, start learning this uh, motorcycling so um i during i i have few friends from nagland but i think we are less than 10 at the moment i think it's like i think it's less than 10 so those are the women that um i know them personally and then it's like very challenging for us that it's very high time to you know come out of our comfort zone even in nagaland even in northeast to come out of our it's very high time for a woman to come out of their comfort zone and then uh, take challenges in life so um, i happened to meet uh 12 women pikers from india during my ladakh trip uh, that was two years ago and those women were such inspiring i got to learn so much about their stories and then we were inspiring each other and that was the you know i never had such opportunity in northeast to ride together with the women bikers so that was my first time that i had that privilege you know from the royal infield company that uh, i happened to visit ladakh so that was uh, one of the biggest turning points and game changing, um, you know, point in my life. So it's it's uh, it's very um, high time for our uh, northeast and then for Indian women to you know come out of our comfort zone and then take challenges in life. Thanks, Anand. Absolutely, I think that's changing for sure. Very visibly, we can see a large number coming in there uh, and I think you're leading the way in, in that direction. Thanks a lot for that. Um, so Van, we have a, uh, so Ivonia, we have a question for you. Uh, you know, after seeing all the pictures that your husband put up, I, you know, Van is the person that's uh, sort of uh, in my head. So uh, Ivonia, we have a question from one of our uh, participants about solo rides, right? Do you do solo rides? I understand that uh, you, know, you ride with your husband, but how is it outside uh, in, in, in other countries? Do you see women taking up solo rides? Is it taboo? What is your uh, you know, take on that? Okay. Um, I, ride, I must say I ride every day. Um, the moment my husband bought me my first one and converted it for me, uh, my car was stopped in the garage. Uh, I do my daily chores with it. We have a fabric. We, I went every day back and forth for the business. A factory. Um, I do my grocery shopping, believe it or not. Um, I make opportunity, but I drive every day of my life. Rain, shine, no matter what, I ride bike every day. Um, the more you ride, the more, uh, the easier it gets. You, you get one with your bike. Um, uh, if, if it, I, I, I believe you get bike bike fit because if, if I don't drive and my bike is very heavy, it's more than 300 kilograms, 
if I don't ride for, for, for three or four days and I get on my bike and I ride it again, I will actually have uh, stuff on the evening and they will all laugh at me. Um, I drive every day. It's, um, it's, I'm so frustrated in Cambodia. I want my bike. I'm watching that airplane every day. I, will, I must get back to my own. Um, we, I ride every day. Um, when we ride, do, we do uh, blank twist runs. When we do uh, stuff together, uh, very a lot of charity runs and stuff. Um, I think the, the one of the ladies said um, when they're riding groups, um, no matter Suzuki, Harley, whatever, uh, with lady riders is a little bit different and so on. When we ride solo or in groups, um, we have. Um, a sort of plan that we do. We have front riders, we call them front riders. We have three riders that ride in the front. Um, they would have already checked the road, whatever, where we go. So um, they would have, we have meeting before we ride, and they'll tell you, we're going uh, for another 500 kilometers. This and this and this, we have uh, potholes here. We, have the, we call it in Afrikaans, South Africa, Raki. They Raki the road. They throw it first, they check it, whatever. Okay. The, the people that start to ride, the, the sort of the new riders, more comfortable, you know, uh, with their first ride. Um, and then you get your sweeper at the back, the one that never left nobody behind. Um, makes everybody in the inside much comfortable to ride together. But um, riding in groups makes you feel much comfortable. Riding alone as well, it gives you confidence. If, if that is what might be giving the answer for the question I have. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I would uh, now ask a question to Minakshi because I think, uh, you know, the question is predominantly, uh, you know, something in your, uh, you know, uh, know-how. Uh, so there are, there are a couple of questions. I'm sort of clubbing it together. One is, uh, I think what you viewers want to ask is about, you know, in, in your experience, what do you think or what is a change that you look forward to uh, as a woman rider? And, you know, is there a change in perspective that's required from the society, public? You know, I'm sure there are two sides. I don't think it's specific to any country. I, I, you know, I don't come from that school of thought, but I still think there are challenges, uh, you know, everywhere. Uh, but from your experience, what do you think is... Uh, you know, has to change or, you know, what is the change that you look forward to? Uh, well, there's, uh, there's a huge list, but uh, my priority list, you know, to be honest, Indian uh, riding scene has come a lot far. You know, when I started riding my first ride, solo ride or a big ride was towards Leh Ladakh and there were no roads and there were no riders. We were not taught how to ride in groups or we were not, there was no one to handhold us. Um, and from there, we've come up to uh, groups who actually open heartedly welcome us without a gender bias, uh, though it is gender bias, there's no gender bias, but then, you know, there is always a privilege that is given to the women riders, you know, uh, if there's a breakdown, uh, we get, uh, you know, quicker help from the group members. Uh, what I would rather have is to learn, you know, um, it's not just the mindset of the bikers, other bikers, but for the women riders also. You know, I, that's why we keep encouraging our girls to learn also, you know, learn to fix your bikes. Uh, that's one change that I would like, uh, you know, uh, there's one change that I'd like in the riding scene. Um, less help from uh, the other members and more knowledge, uh, a peak interest in the knowledge of uh, biking, uh, whether it is riding style, whether it is the riding technique, whether it is, you know, fixing up the bike, making sure that you have your paperwork right, making sure that you're the person who is taking the bike to the service station and getting it fixed rather than, you know, depending on a husband or a brother or a, you know, uh, father. So this is one big change that I would really like to see in our girls, um, in our uh, riding scene also. As the good news is, yes, there are a lot of women who are actually paying that much of attention. Uh, there are a lot of girls who are actually, you know, putting that effort in learning, uh, you know, these small things. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing that I would really like to 
kind of change the scene here is um you know a uh, lot of um, you know another society is changing but then you know a female rider gets a lot of eyeballs than you know normal bikers um you know that kind of there are a lot of incidences where people try and you know harass women riders i sh- it's out of curiosity of course that there, there's no maligned uh, intention as such but you know that kind of hampers our confidence at times because r- the conditioning has been very different but i guess um this is one small thing that i would like uh, to change so yeah thank you thanks uh, thanks minakshi thank you uh, so i'll sort of lead that question on to mohana uh, and ask her is there a lot of everybody wants to know are there enough challenges i you know on your behalf i would like to say that you are enjoying riding more than <laughs> challenges out there but for the because those are the questions that coming out i would uh, you know like to pass on the question to mohana uh, so let's let's do this slightly differently right rather than talk about challenges all the way can you share an interesting uh story it could be a challenge it could be something interesting from your riding life uh, we'll we'll go around the board with all the speakers but mohana would you like to start yeah i would i actually um it's also pertaining to the same question just now um uh for me actually i um my father actually taught me how to ride a bike after i gained the passion from reading the newspaper right so at 13 he taught me how to ride the bike he is the one who taught me how to ride a yamaha 88 so uh, at 17 like uh, miss vicky mentioned us now uh, normally at 17 our parents uh, make sure it's a duty uh, to to get us a license for car and some of them uh, in her case her father got her the bike license so when i wanted to take my father said no way he said um bike are dangerous for girls he told me no way and and i i argued with him i said to him you but you are the one who taught me how to ride a bike so how can you you know you say this to me he said no that was just for you to learn you know but i'm not going to get you a license you're not going on the road so um but this is my experience but i could not accept that because um one it is my passion one more um, like as i said uh, at at the time when i was studying there was uh, not much public transport and all that so i needed to commute so the cheapest was a, a bike and uh, what i did i got it on my own I got it on my own. I got a small bike, and I didn't inform my my father. Didn't know about it. So for many years, he didn't know about it. And even the one that I recently have, I hid it from him for one year. And only after a year, and everything started to come out on social media and all that. Only after that, he knew. So you know, I, it was a bit difficult for me to to um, put that to him. I had a, a big plan how I wanted to share it with him. and uh, slowly he came to know and he he confronted me so then you know i had to break it to him lah but now that he knew uh, no and uh, when i showed him who are my friends who i ride with that i don't go alone and this one group who really support me uh, the garuda bikers and meri bikers they are really they you know they, they take care of us and they are with us like as a family um that's where i i i i want to share you know Uh, as parents yes it is a dangerous thing um they are afraid of uh, of our safety they want us to be safe but they sh- they should change their perspective on this that you know um there is a lot of things in 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 biking and riders you should um, they should encourage them in a certain way like you know you need to have proper safety gears on these are the way these are the things that they should um uh, these are the ways they should encourage them you know teach them the right way you just cannot tell them you know don't don't ride you can't ride i think they should, they should i mean parents and people they should uh, change their perspective on that that is one thing so when i explain to him you know we have we have safety gears on we have a good helmet we have good jacket and riding boots and we go in a group and after, only after that he was kind of uh, you know accepting this this um, this passion of mine so that that is one thing and um like um miss pratika said as ladies we should not only know how to ride a bike we must learn about the bike so as um, for now i'm um, every bit and wherever i can i will try to learn about my bike how to handle my bike but i um 
I cannot ride my bike every day because you know the situation here is not like that. When we go to work and all that, we need to commute by car. So uh, whenever I have the chance on weekend, I will try to join um, any event, any possible event. And um, for challenges, I would say yes. Uh, there's two things actually, like solo riding and riding in a group. Solo riding actually depends on the person. You know, sometimes people go for solo riding because they want to discover themselves or they, they just want to find peace. Uh, when we're going in a group, we actually, um, actually for me, when I grow, go in a group, it's actually just um, getting out of my daily, daily routine. And I want to go out with my friends and um, riding with them uh, get, get there for me. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Mona. Uh, I'll, I'll come to Vicky next. Uh, could you, uh, you know, since you've had your name there, I, I assume that that's how you'd like to be called. Uh, yes. Forgive me if uh, it's otherwise. No, it's um, okay. All right. So um, uh, there is a question about, uh, you know, while you can answer uh, about any interesting incident, etc. But I think you you spoke about how you went on to riding in your introduction. Uh, how do you go about, there is a question from Jayashree, another female rider, about um, keeping yourself fit, uh, you know, gearing up for the bikes, any special diets that you follow for long rides because you've done the Iron Butt Challenge, etc. So can you help us uh, help the other female riders in the group on how do you go about preparing yourself for long rides and the endurance rides? Um, okay, of course, uh, being fit uh, is not only for bikers, being fit is for everyone <laughs> so all of us have to be fit um, and most of the time if you see uh, I don't know about the other countries but most of the time when you talk about riding in Malaysia especially on a weekend ride you know where it's like a, a day ride kind of thing most of the time we are going somewhere to eat <laughs> that's that's usually the ride <laughs> we go somewhere to eat and then we come back we find places uh, interesting food uh, things like that but uh, uh, of course as I said, being fit is a personal thing that everybody should have, follow a proper diet to be healthy, you know. But uh, if you're talking about long rides and all that, like for example, when we did the endurance challenge, the iron butt challenge, which is basically you have to ride uh, all, uh, within 24 hours, we have to complete uh, 1,600 kilometers. So it's, a, it's a really a long ride and you need a lot of stamina. Uh, to to complete the ride. So when we had this uh, program or this activity, there were about ten riders. So we had like a, you know, when you're riding, you cannot be possibly stopping everywhere and eating anything that you want. You might have a bad stomach and things like that. So we had like a a, a person who was in charge of the food that we take, the food intake. So basically, we we basically had a menu like which is a standard menu for everybody which we feel is good for us you know uh, those kind of things and uh, if you're talking about long rides preparing for long rides you normally my long rides are in a group i never do solo so we have uh, riding plans whoever is in charge of the ride will come up with the riding plans and also it is very very necessary to have proper riding gears uh, uh, to ride uh, wherever we are going and also we will have as to uh, where are our pit stops what are the challenges that we may face along the way like when i did the ride to golden triangle it was like a 10 days ride um, so what are the challenges that we have we will be passing through this route uh, may hong Son, where there's about 1800 corners how are we going to handle that so these are the things that we look into when we are talking about long rides uh, long rides basically is a uh, riding plan, being safe, uh, accommodation and things like that. But if you're talking about a normal weekend rides, it's basically food. So we go to special places to eat. Sometimes we ride about 100 kilometers just to have a coffee and dosa and come back, you know. <laughs> so the kind of rides, yeah. That's really nice. Thanks, thanks, uh, Vicky. Um, so, Ivonia, uh, would you want to share, uh, you know, any interesting story from, uh, you know, your riding life? That's something that uh, a lot of people want to get a sense of. Or you can talk about some challenges or, you know, I, probably I think what people would like to hear is a, an interesting story or an interesting incident that stays on top of your mind from your riding career. 
Yes, our ladies look for um, look for chances to have all together and arrive. Um, yes, you get a lot of people that um, they try to get your attention when the ladies are on bikes and they are flapping in the wind and everything. They like boot and a lot of distraction and whatever. So yes, that's a, that's one thing you you need to um, uh, learn very quickly. Um, do not let them um, take any of your focus out of, off of the road. So um, you basically uh, put that out of eyesight and you go. Um, we had challenges that we went on one ride and the lady bike broke down. And like I said, just now we have a sleeper at the back. Uh, the person will go, the front the riders will go on and the middle riders will go on. And later on, when you see the back riders getting lost at the back, you know that there is really a problem. We do learn a lot of hand signs, which will give you exactly a notification to know what was what is the problem, um, if the gas is finished, if there's a breakdown at the back, if there's an accident or whatever. And um, on all those signs or whatever, the ladies will decide if the ride is going to be stopped and everybody is going back or the front riders will go on and they will be able to take care of a small uh, small incident at the back. Like I said, that is stuff that you, you, you learn very quickly and I must say it falls back to even solo riding because when you're one or two or three people, you cannot believe how quickly you fall into that same line. You will have three people, immediately you will decide which will be the leader of the three, which will be the middle rider, which will be the, the back rider. You will normally put uh, the people least um, in, 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 in um, the least, least uh, yeah. experienced rider, ride, driver. You will put in the middle. The, the front rider will be your most experienced driver and you will have your other driver at the back. Also experienced, the middle riders will be those that is not, they don't ride as often as you do, so that they can see what the front riders do, and the back riders can keep them in coach if there's any problems there. Um, solo riding, if you ride every day, you're not gonna have a problem with that. Um, what I can say, what, what I get comfortable with, you get, I don't know um, in other countries so much. Um, we might get, we've got a lot of soul gates. Um, I think when, I, when we were in Malaysia uh, to KL, we also got those soul gates to Penang, uh, uh, which you go through. We make sure that we have very, um, we have in South Africa, we call it the e tag that we buy, and we will attach it with a magnet on the bike. And we will go through without even stopping. You will go through it, we'll pick it up, and you will go through so that there's no um, installment in between. Very easy. You get um, bags that you put on your legs. Um, um, I think Vicky will know about that, which makes it also easy. Um, you have a very uh, credit card stuff that you will need very easily so that you don't have to pull off the road. Um, make your, your drive much easier, um, more stuff available for yourself. You will get a good uh, attachment that you can put on your uh, on your uh, motorbike in front where you can attach your phone, which you can, um, with your, in your helmet, you have your section that you can just press a little bit, a uh, knob, and you speak on your phone. So it is all this little bit. To buy the bike is actually cheap. <laughs> Buy all the nitty gritty stuff that goes with it and custom it and make it to you to your satisfaction. That is what costs money, but that is the pleasure of it. Every little bit you build on your bike, it makes it more comfortable, more freedom. Um, that's my stress. Uh, stress re reload or unload is my bike. Um, you people spoke just now about um, getting fit for your bike or whatever. But if I don't do weight, I won't be able to pull around my 340 kg um, on my steering in the front. Um, and that's what keeps you young. I'm 57. 
and the thing I'm the scared of is that I can never put my leg over my bike. So I'm sure going to stay fit. I want to drive that bike for as long as I can. Um, I'm the grandma that gets to the um, to the primary school and go and fetch my grandchildren with my motorbike. They like look at me like I'm from I'm from another space. <laughs> I don't care. That's what makes it for me good. Um, the first thing my grandchildren wanted was a leather pants and helmet. Fine for me. We buy it, we make them bike it. Uh, the bottom line is enjoyment. You enjoy it. That's all I can say. Thanks a lot. Driver. Thanks a lot, Ivonia. I think there's, there's no gender to that. So, you know, I think all of us feel the same. Uh, it's the same for us as well. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably get, I think we're towards the end of the session now. Uh, Onen, you want to share some interesting incident from your, um, you know, biking life or something that you remember fondly or uh, that you don't like to remember? Uh, can you share some, something with us? Um, I have so many funny incidents. I have so many miracle things that happened during my journey and also a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> very um, interesting thing happened during my tours. And yeah, so one was like uh, during my Nagaland tour. So I was going to Kifiri, which is like, um, that was my first district from Kohima. So on that first day, while I was uh, crossing this bridge uh, called Akiko, so I was uh, Akash, Akash bridge, sorry. So I was crossing this Akash bridge and then there was like two truck drivers, they were fixing their truck. And then nearby that there was a signboard, like there was, it was written a lot of like, you know, information about the roads and all these kilometers. So I just thought like I will take a picture from there. So I stopped by and I was taking a selfie. And at the time I heard like two of them, they were like, you know, like literally arguing that she is a lady. No, it doesn't. No, it my guess. You know, they were confused that I was like one of them said I'm a girl, and one was like, no, it's a girl, it's a boy. Like that. No, they were having a very, <laughs> very hard time to figure me out. So I just let it be. Like you know, we just let it let them figure out well, which gender I am, and I'm just go. <laughs> so that was a funny incident. And then uh, one incident was. Um, in Ladakh. So we were riding for 18 days in Ladakh. Uh, it was flagged off from Delhi. So during one of my uh, 18 days of riding, I like two of my friends, we were like literally lost. We were li literally lost in one place and then like mm, only two of us were left. So we were trying to figure out like she had this um, navigator with her so we were trying to figure out okay which way are we which way we should go and then like you know at that time um, you know that area was kind of a very deserted area it was very uh you know there was no single blend in that area in that mountain so me and my friend we were we just kept on going and at the time i was like you know just singing i feel like singing i feel like Bring at that time. So um, it happened, you know, we were riding for nearly half an hour. And at the time, I started to sing and I started to pray, you know, praising God for the beautiful world, for the beautiful place, and for the great privilege that for me that I was able to be there, you know, to witness the Ladakh, the beauty of Ladakh, you know. So at that time, I was crying for like nearly one hour. And there is this voice inside of me, um, you know, it, I, I don't know what was it, but there was like a silent voice, like small voice, you know, telling me, Onan, this is not going to be your first time. I'm going to take you places. So at that time, I was so blessed. You know, I came back home, back to Nagaland. And from that day, I landed in Nagaland, you know, uh, everything was like on the right track, everything. I was so blessed. I even got a job that I wanted, but um, I was working in a bank last year, but then I decided to leave and then, you know, pursue a uh, Nagaland tour. And after that, um, the other day, you know, I keep on um, thinking about this very 
uh, what do you say, emotional art that I've been through there. And then, you know, it was kind of a very uh, life-changing moment in Ladakh. You know, till the day everything is on right track, everything is like positive. You know, it's, it's like such a very amazing story. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Anil. It truly is. Uh, Minakshi wanted to answer something on the dietary question. I uh, thanks, Sridham. Uh, Sridham, you know, uh, I purposefully asked you to, uh, you know, uh, give me the uh, mic for some time for uh, this question where we were asked, um, you know, what, um, what best way to keep uh, our, uh, you know, what should uh, female riders keep in their mind while riding in terms of, uh, you know, diet or uh, keeping up with the energy. So it's not just the Indian women, but all, and most women, uh, you know, we don't pay attention to our nutrition, which kind of results in, you know, not coping up with the energy levels. So uh, my, uh, you know, request to all the lady riders is that, you know, please pay more attention to your nutrition because the more healthier you are, it is not about just the weight. Um, you know, health has nothing to do with the weight or the loss of weight, uh, which is to do with how, what's your stamina, if you can keep up with the, um, you know, uh, uncertainty of the roads. Um, there are rides when we, I taken solo rides where you know there are hardly any good food what do we do then you tend to have uh, you know, stomach upsets you tend to have um, various other issues you know we don't pay attention to uh, our diet we don't pay attention to our uh, you know drinking uh, like drinking how much water we're drinking so um the biggest concern that most uh, female riders have is they don't, don't pay attention to the nutrition. Uh, we don't voluntarily go ahead and uh, invest in, uh, say, for example, a, a nutrition supplement or a dietary supplement. Um, you know, you know, naturally, uh, we spend so much of time taking care of others, our families and everything that we forget to take care of ourselves. Um, that's one thing uh, that helps and uh, no matter what weight, age or height or you know condition you are in, uh, keeping up with your health by a means of nutrition and exercise is no excuse. You have to have to have to do it. I guess that's two things that I wanted to add. Um, of course, meeting so many lovely um, people here and listening to their inspiring story is amazing. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this uh, platform. Uh, back to you, Shira. Hey, Pinakshi. So don't go anywhere. We'll do a quick round of few questions with everybody. I think I have all these speakers in muted. So we want to get your favorite bike uh, and your dream destination. These are the two <laughs> questions that you want you to answer. Okay. Very um, quickly. So, sort of a rapid fire that we can <laughs> So uh, my dream bike uh, as of now is uh, Tiger, uh, Triumph Tiger. Um, my dream destination, I've already been to that destination, that's Greece. Uh, I rode from uh, Leeds, UK to Greece. So uh, it's done, but I would still want to do it from India. So yeah. Great. Uh, Van, would you like to go next? Next, what's your favorite bike in one dream destination that you would like to go or you've gone and you want to visit again? I free glide and I cannot wait to get back to South Africa to do the run to the Drakensberg with all the lady riders from Harley. That would be that one. All right. I think one of your friends is also attending and she's, she's written that uh, she cannot wait to feel the wind in your hairs together with you in South Africa. I think it's Hanley. She's there uh, in the conference as well. Uh, thank you very much, Van. Uh, Mohana, would you like to go next? Um, my dream bike is definitely a gold wing. That has been uh, since, I was, uh, since I read that article at 11 years old. Uh, and my dream destination is definitely Bhutan. I want to go to Bhutan. Onen, you want to do next? Yeah, my dream bike, I have like two dream bikes. <laughs> so one is like Tiger, and then one would be like R6 sports bike. And then I would really love to go to Africa and then meet all those women and then, you know, get to know the stories. Yeah. Great. Uh, Vicky, you go last. Uh, what's your dream bike and what's your favorite destination that you would like? To uh, okay, I would say I'm already riding my favorite bike or my dream bike, but perhaps 
in years to come, I would like to add on the bikes. Uh, uh, one of those bikes that I'm looking at is perhaps a, a sports bike, which I thought I would want to own one in my life. And also definitely Harley. Um, uh, Harley bike, one of it at least. I must have one. Uh, and I, I wish to, because I'm not looking at a short-term ride, I'm looking for a riding for a very long time. So I would look into adding more bikes, but this is this would be my favorite bike. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Vicky. This was a great session. Um, you know, once again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all. So it's scheduled to be an hour. I think we we slightly overshot time, but uh, wonderful to hear all the stories. Uh, we were able to, I think, hear from everybody different perspectives and you know there's a lot of love pouring in on the chat window and i'm sure there are some questions that uh, went unanswered uh, you know their profiles are up there on, on our social media channel but feel free to send in your questions and we will get them directed to the respective speakers uh, thank you once again everybody for joining in uh, do we have colonel jacob uh, Yes, I'm here. Yeah. All right. So I would, uh, as our uh, you know regular uh, agenda, we would request Colonel Jacob to go ahead and thank these lovely ladies for joining us. Over to you, Jacob. Thank you, Sriram. Uh, I was listening to all these wonderful stories and uh, such interesting personalities. Uh, it was, it was some people. Somebody was talking about gender bias and things like that. Suddenly, you know, something came to my mind. We consider you equal or better. You know, I have a personal example, to, personal experience to tell you. It goes back to around 30 years I'm talking about. I had just learned riding maybe three, four years, five years I've been, I've been riding already. This is probably 92, 93. So uh, somewhere near Pune, you know, a little bit of hills and all. One night I was riding back from somewhere and uh, I considered myself to be a good rider. And, you know, men, uh, if challenged, we will try to overdo our riding also. So I was riding quite fast and we got into a race with somebody. At the end of it, I realized this was a girl and uh, you know, I don't want to accept, but she was a wee bit faster than me. Basically, I don't want to accept and say that I was beaten. You know, she was a little faster. I mean, so we consider, we admit, I've seen a lot of riders, a lot of ladies, you know, different places. So many of you are better than many of us. So we consider you that way. That is, uh, and all of us, we feel the same way. And 99% of us feel the same way. It was wonderful to listen to all of you. Oh, thank you, speakers. Uh, Mohana, Onen, Avonia, Minakshi, Vigneshwari. It was wonderful meeting you all of you here. Thanks for sparing your time and uh, you know, taking out this opportunity to share your moments with us. And thanks to uh, Talk Tales for making this possible. Uh, Ashish, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here, sure. Hello. Ashish, uh, you like to say something about? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks to every guest who's joined today and it's, uh, hearing uh, experiences are awesome. And uh, we want to more time, but we have a one hour to restrictions. So further, we will do the more sessions with individual riders for their stories, their experience and all the things. So thanks. Thanks everyone for joining today. Over to thank Jack. You, and uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Oswald, uh, uh, for he is the uh, Save Earth Ride Tamil Nadu coordinator from Chennai. Uh, Save Earth Ride is one initiative we have taken up for planting trees, you know, giving back to society or the kind of pollution we do as bikers, whatever little bit. You know, to, to offset that, we have been trying to plant trees uh, since last year we started off. So uh, Oswald has been coordinating from uh, the effort from Tamil Nadu. And today's lecture also he has been... Uh, able to coordinate a lot of uh, speakers and things. So uh, if Oswald is there, may I request you to speak uh, about it? Uh, Oswald, are you there? Yeah, 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 Connell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you, thank you, Connell. No, it was uh, nice and lovely to hear all the ladies talk here. And uh, it was like truly inspirational to hear all the ladies talk. And uh, save Earth Ride, you know, from my part, I would like to say, like, save Earth Ride. Oh, sorry, I think he lost you. Muted again. Can you, uh, can somebody unmute him? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 
so also you no know, thank you everyone like for coming here so i would like to talk about save earth right that's what you know i have been like talking about to everyone so it has been happening as an ongoing event till august 2nd in india due to the curfew and all those things uh, and we have like you know a lot of countries participating in and like you know malaysia few of our brother clubs are there and they are trying to you know help us from that point of view and uh, singapore also they are working with us on the same and uh, sri lanka they are working on the same with us and lot more countries also they are joining us for that so i would uh, like to request each and every panelist uh, today who are here you know to support us on you know planting some trees uh, and promote us with this you know save the uh, initiative on and on before august 2nd so just plant a tree and send a photo or video to us so that we can all you know like inspire other people to plant more trees and like save the earth thank you thank you over to you jacob sir thank you oswald uh, uh, once again thank you all the uh, speakers and all the uh, wonderful viewers who have been watching us on uh, zoom here and then on facebook and youtube live uh, thank you for being here and uh, this is the fourth uh, event we are having uh, in the in the series of talks and the next one is planned schedule for the next sunday and they're on uh, we'll be organizing this and uh, thank you speakers thank you uh, talk tales thank you viewers thanks everyone we'll meet soon again till then uh, bye bye